views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub from Empowerment Radio as he addresses some of the most prevailing challenges in our day-to-day lives. Find out how you can use the power of your mind to overcome self-sabotaging patterns and build a solid foundation of confidence and self-respect. Learn cutting-edge tools and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. This is the time to empower yourself. Now, here's your host, Dr. Friedemann Schaub. Welcome, welcome to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman, looking forward to another hour of talking about breakthrough solutions for confident living. We just all survived Super Tuesday. It's over. I don't know why they call it super, but it's over. And I think for many people, this means head scratching and having little question marks coming out of their heads, wondering what actually happened. And I think what most of us are wondering is how come that a billionaire and reality TV star with a really bad haircut is becoming the front runner of the grand old party. And I'm certainly not talking about politics. I'm going to talk about the psychology. Some commentators say that he is tapping into the fears, the fears and insecurities in the country. And I believe that is true, but I also believe that there is a specific part of our mind, especially that deeper subconscious mind, that is attracted to Donald, and it's the victim. Now, nobody likes to be called victim. Nobody wants to necessarily admit that they feel like a victim because the word victim just feels for many weak, pathetic, just something wrong. But the victim pattern is actually a very natural part of our survival modes, what is, again, deeply anchored in our subconscious. And so it is an integral part of us. And it's actually a very old archetype that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. I mean, when you think about that story, I mean, definitely, you know, God told them not to eat from the tree of uh, knowledge. And then Eve somehow listened to the serpent and took an apple and or took the fruit, I guess, wasn't an apple, was something better than that, and ate from that tree. And uh, of course, you know, later on, they were found out, but she also happened to give Adam a little bite of it. And when they got busted by God, basically, you know, he said, no, it was a serpent. It was definitely not me. It was its fault. And Adam said, well, you know, I only did it because Eve told me so. And by the way, you created her, so it's your fault. So in some ways, you know, this is something where early on, we already saw that being the victim is one kind of escape pattern that we have. And we do feel it way more often than we really want to admit it to ourselves. Now, when we are in that victim mode, it doesn't mean that you're there 24-7 and that you always feel that uh, archetype running your life. We can fall into the victim archetype in that pattern just on and off throughout the week. And I will tell you a little bit more about how you can find out whether you are in the victim mode or not. And especially when you are in it, what can you do to get out of it? Now, if you do have any questions or you would like to know a little bit more how to deal with your own victim, you can call 888-418-6890 Or you can also use the chat board on the website 
and uh, ask any questions there, the transformationtalkradio.com website. Uh, there are two kinds of victims. There is one victim that we could definitely say is the victim of real trauma. That's the victim that experienced abuse, maybe during childhood, molestation, bullied in school. It's the person who gets harassed at work, mistreated, is the victim of domestic violence. And those victims, interestingly enough, often refuse to admit to themselves that they're victimized because especially children, I see this often, feel guilty and uh, even blame themselves for what happened. Or in the case of domestic violence or also harassment at work, sometimes there is just too great of a fear inside of the victims to tell others about what happened and to also admit to themselves that they are actually suffering trauma and abuse. Then there is the other victim. And the other victim is a victim of limitations. And I think most of us may fall more into that second kind of victimization, which is that when you feel, let's say you are really overwhelmed and for some reason, you know, you have so much on your plate, you cannot think straight. And then the kid starts screaming and you just feel it's too much and you just want to scream and yell, but unfortunately, nobody would listen. Or maybe you are just really stressed out and, you know, you don't find your checkbook or you somehow spill a glass of milk or someone cuts you off in traffic and you just feel in that moment that everyone and everything is against you. You just feel the victim of your own circumstances. We also can feel victimized by the government, by money. We can feel victimized by our jobs. We often feel even victimized by our own emotions. A lot of my clients that come to me feel victimized by anxiety. They feel victimized by depression. They also can feel victimized by their bodies. We can feel that when our body is falling ill, or when we don't lose the weight we want to, or when we have chronic pain, that our body betrays us, that it lets us down. And that is a form of victimization. And I certainly have been at times in my life feeling victimized by life in itself, by the universe, by God, just when things appeared unfair, when I tried really hard and things didn't work out. In that moment, my inner victim came out screaming and yelling and just wanted to prove to me that, see, you did pull the short end of the stick and uh, made me feel in that moment powerless, made me feel in that moment betrayed and abandoned by destiny, by anything positive in life. Now, what is the victim actually? What does it actually do to us and how can we know when we are in our own victim mode now one of the things that i find about the victim so fascinating is that that inner victim has a really good memory i mean how many of you feel that when you are in that mode of feeling powerless hopeless feeling like nothing's going to change feeling like well i better don't even try. How many of you are referring back to the past? I have a client that I work with that has a series of times at work that were absolutely not only abusive, but also surprisingly unfair. Things where, although she has done so much good for the companies. She all of a sudden got either overlooked for a promotion or even let go. There were politics at play that she didn't understand, that she didn't really want to partake in. And at the end, she was the one who was basically at the brunt of, of the whole story. So after several years of that, she felt that there is no place out there for her where she can really 
find a job where she can really find any kind of meaningful or purposeful employment. And so she gave up. And she gave up because she was in that sense of victimization. Although she is brilliant, although she is a person who has so much to offer, although she, looking back, realized, I didn't do really anything wrong. I made good choices. But she still continued to refer to herself as someone who is a loser, someone who doesn't really have a chance to ever have a career and have ever success. And part of that is that the past got over and over pulled back in the forefront of the mind. And if you notice that for yourself, if you think often about the people that hurt you or disappointed you, if you are identifying yourself more with what happened to you than what actually you chose or what you do or ultimately who you are, you know that your victim, that archetype inside of you, has a pretty strong hold on you. When we come back, we will talk more about how you know that you're in the victim mode, but also what can you do to actually help the victim to understand what it needs, but also what it really wants to tell you. So we'll come back in a few moments. If you have a question, please call in at, uh, I always forget this number, 888-418-6890. Do I sound a little? Do I sound a little? On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Radio. Find Your Shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basile as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine On Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. What is a master soul gardener? With Nomi Bahar, you can be one too. Her revolutionary Gates of Power method is a comprehensive program that addresses every aspect of yourself and gives you the tools to tend to the seeds of your soul's garden. Let Nomi guide you through and beyond what's holding you back and help you embrace the life you've always dreamed of. To learn more about upcoming classes and workshops, visit gatesofpower.com today. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Pat. The ancient Inca root vegetable maca is world renowned for its wide array of health benefits. As a family run company of true maca specialists, the maca team's mission is to provide you with fresh, organic, premium quality maca powders at a fair price. Amazing. All of the products are always organically grown, fair traded, GMO free, fresh, and potent. 
So don't take my word for it. Experience the life-changing benefits of maca today. Visit themacateam.com. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. I'm Dr. Friedman, and we have a topic that some of you may cringe thinking about. Some of you may want to turn the radio off because they don't want to be reminded. Some of you may feel victimized, but we are talking about, but today in the spotlight is our inner victim, and we want to welcome this part of us. We don't want to push it aside. We don't want to shame it. We don't want to call it wrong. We just want to understand more. Why do all of us, even the strongest, even the ones that have the appearance of always having it together, even though they appear like it, they also have an inner victim inside. So what is it about that? And And how can we understand more the function and the needs of that inner victim? So if you, by the way, just to get that in, if you have any questions, write on the chat board, use the phone 888-418-6898 and talk about your experience with the inner victim. It's like uh, Tanji was writing, how do you deal with a friend who uses the victim mentality without enabling them? It's a really good question because part of the issue with the victim is that there is a, a, just a difficulty with the victim to get out of that powerlessness because the victim is always justifying itself. And it says, well, I can't do anything about that. I have tried everything, nothing works, or it's not my fault. You know, someone told me the other day about uh, the relationship with her boyfriend, where the boyfriend comes every night home from work and wakes her up and complains and rants and wants to ta uh, talk about whatever. And, you know, we are talking about three or four o'clock in the morning and basically takes away her sleep. And she has to get up at eight to go to work. And she said, I have tried everything. I said everything. And at the end, basically was in that powerlessness and also in that place of self-justification. And I think that's exactly what uh, Tanji is dealing with when someone is feeling victimized and feeling like a victim. Sometimes it's really hard to get through to the person. A good friend of mine tells me that now that she's 50, she's completely invisible. No one in the world sees her Everyone is basically treating her as if she wouldn't exist. There is no respect, no recognition, nothing there. And of course, no matter how much uh, we all try to convince her how amazing, how beautiful, how charming, how delightful she is, it just bounces off like of a steel door that just keeps any positivity on the outside. And this is where it can become this enabling process where we are trying to convince a person it's not true, what you're telling is only a little tiny facet of the story. And even though there may be a little bit of truth, there is so much more that you can also find that that victim is often self-righteous. And that is when this, the wheels are spinning faster and at the end the victim feels itself even more in that role of nothing's going to change. And my friends don't even understand me because they want to convince me of something that's just not true. See, part of the inner victim is also that it needs the opposite, the villain. It needs the perpetrator. And so the victim is taking everything personally. And it doesn't only take personally the barista that ignored or maybe the the person that, uh, you know, want to help, but at the end doesn't understand you. The inner victim feels in general that there is a black and a white world. There is good and bad. And there is people that cannot be trusted. And then there are people that maybe 
a little bit trustworthy, but no one really gets too close. There is something about this idea of the inner victim that it's better and ultimately safer to push people away and to keep them at arm's length, even though the inner victim is yearning for support. It's yearning for someone who is listening. It's yearning for someone who makes that pain go away. But then there is the trust of missing to really let someone do this or let someone help you. Now, the other thing about the inner victim, just to you know, get you in touch with your inner victim is also that self-victimization. That's something that is probably the most disconcerting part of the inner victim, that we are hurting ourselves when we are in that role. We are hurting ourselves when we are in that idea of powerlessness, in the idea of injustice, in the idea of nothing's going to change. Because this part of us spins that even further and says, I have been hurt, I have been victimized, and of course, either it was my fault, I'm not a good person, or it says, well, because I have been hurt and because I have been victimized, I have a reason to suffer. I have been mistreated, nobody was nice to me, so I do have a reason to be unhappy, hopeless, and stuck. And so there is also something that we don't even realize how when we are repeating the story of the victim, we are chopping away our confidence. We are undermining any sense of self because we are trying to fit ourselves into the story of what happened to us. And as I said before, we are completely forgetting who we really are outside of the story. We have a caller, Justin, and uh, let's bring him or her on. Hello? Caller, this is you're Dr. On the Friedman. Air. Hi, Dr. Friedman. Hi. Um, what? Yes. This is Jessica. Um, so something you said really hit home with me, uh, and it's talking about our bodies and feeling, you know, a victim of our body attacking us. And so... Um, I've had really bad knee problems that have not allowed me to be a runner for the last three years. And I find myself falling into that, you know, why me? Why does this happen to me? Feel sorry for me thing rather than, you know, just getting off my bum and doing something about it. So what would be your advice to someone like me to get out of my little rut? Well, what is the reason why you cannot run? Is there like a cartilage problem or what do you have? Um, it's, it's IT band syndrome. So like the IT band mm -hmm. gets inflamed and it just causes a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and I, and I get it, you know, I can't run, but then I find myself, you know, having, I guess, pouting about it and just saying, well, then I'm not going to do anything, which is, you know, I can do a lot of other things. I could bike, I could walk, I could go on an elliptical, you know, I have a, I know logically I have a lot of other options, but for some reason, emotionally, I can't get myself to do those things. Right. And so, you know, the, the, the part of you that says, well, poor me in that moment then basically says what? Sit at home and feel sorry for yourself in the hope of what? In the hope of that probably you won't get disappointed again. Running may have been really important to you. It may have been something that you identified yourself with. Then it gets taken away from you for maybe you have been overdoing it. Maybe the inflammation tells you that, you know, your shoes, your running style or whatever was maybe too hard. Maybe you've been pushing too much, whatever it is. But now that what was so important for you has been taken away. And so there is a part of you, mm -hmm. and this is, I'm glad that you're bringing this up because what does the victim actually try to intend? The victim tries ultimately to, pro to protect us. It tries to keep us safe. It says, okay, don't get your hopes up. Don't find joy in something else because it may again be taken away. Don't, you know, when you think about the people that have been, you know, in unhappy relationships and then they feel this really dark cloud of hopelessness and, again, feeling victimized around them. And why? Because 
it does give them a sense of, well, not even looking forward to anything else so that these hopes don't get dashed again, so that there is not again disappointment. So that's one of the things that your inner victim may want you just to be safe in that place of no hope and no movement forward. Now, the other thing is also that, and we're going to go more into this later in the show, that this feeling also may have a deeper meaning for it. And it may actually ask you to do something that you may have not really paid attention to. In this regard, it may be for you, may this possibility that you need to notice where this pain came from, and it has something to do with boundaries. See, when we are feeling the victim, usually our boundaries have been somewhere broken. We feel attacked, we feel assaulted. And so is it possible that you were pushing beyond your own boundaries of well-being with your running? Oh, yeah. I mean, I know that's possible because I was, um, you know, at the time this started, I was training for a half marathon, which I'd never done before. I've always been the type of person to just kind of run three miles, two or three miles and call it good. And I'm a very competitive person. So, you know, if I look at it from my logical brain, I know that I probably went into it pushing myself a little bit too hard physically and mentally to do something and do it quickly. You know what I mean? Instead of just. Exactly. Exactly. So maybe what the message is that you're getting is also that you need to change how hard you have been pushing yourself. You need to not victimize yourself by wanting more and wanting it faster than maybe your body is capable of or maybe what's good for you. You know, in some ways, the victim Mm -hmm. also needs to be convinced that you're learning from this experience and that you're not going into biking and just trying the same thing with the biking or the swimming and that you are, again, pushing yourself beyond the boundaries of your well-being. And uh, and that can be something once you are reflecting on that and you're making actually a commitment to yourself to listen to your body rather than just following some goal that you're setting yourself, you may actually be finding yourself on a bike again or doing things that your body allows you to do and your mind lets you do because you got the lesson. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Does that make sense? It does. It makes total sense, actually. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Now, when we come back, we will talk more about what the victim actually needs to hear from us, what it actually wants to tell us, and how we can integrate this part of us so that some people call it the enlightened victim, the empowered victim. How can this part of us that feels so pathetic and weak actually make us more empowered and help us to build more confidence? Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. 
If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit TheFearAndAnxietySolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Francine Vale is a being of light. She believes that all people of planet Earth are as well. As co-host of the Angel Healer radio show, Francine teaches you heart-centered ways to manifest healing on your own behalf and how to integrate love more fully into your daily life. Connect with your angels as you find your life flowing with ease and harmony. Walk the path of light with Francine and Dr. Pat Basili every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you anxious and worried? Do you feel stuck with fear and insecurity? Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the award-winning author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, has developed a breakthrough program which has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. If you are ready to end your struggles with fear and anxiety, join Dr. Friedemann for his upcoming breakthrough webinar, which starts on April 30th. Visit TheFearAndAnxietySolution.com to find out how you can overcome your anxiety for good. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman. Jessica, thank you so much for calling in. A great question. And I think a lot of people can relate to what you said about your body and also emotions, that sometimes we do just feel powerless with ourself, mainly because we don't know why these things happen and what they actually try to tell us. And so we just feel in that deer in the headlight position in life where we're not moving forward. We are just feeling weak and uh, unable to make even decisions on how to pursue things. And that is what the inner victim can do. Now, if you have any questions, again, you can call in 888 418 6890. And of course, you can also go to that little chat box. Now, the victim there, what does the victim actually want? We just talked about uh, with Jessica that there is certainly the attention that it wants. The victim has usually some kind of a message for us. And, and unfortunately, we're not always the best listeners because it feels so bad. But like in Jessica's case, boundaries are a very important part of that because the boundaries that we are at times ignoring are the boundaries that not only other people are breaking, it's also the boundaries that we are breaking for ourselves. And I'm thinking about the times where we are making promises to ourselves, where we are telling ourselves that we are taking better care of ourselves, we are maybe looking more for joy and purpose in our lives. We are going earlier to bed. We stop drinking too much or smoking too much, and and then we don't. And so there is also uh, that breaking of your own words and breaking the boundaries of your own promises that can make you feel victimized, that can make you feel powerless, and that can make you feel almost give up on yourself. So those feelings of victimization can also come from how you treat yourself. And it is important then to take a little bit of time to go inside and listen to this, which we actually will do after the next break. We will do a little meditation, a little inner work, which invites you to go inside and, and listen and meet your inner victim and, and hopefully also take care of it. 
One of the things about the inner victim, which I find is the most fascinating and maybe also the most encouraging one, is that the, this part of us, this archetype, is actually an opportunity. An opportunity for us to grow beyond, and again, maybe beyond our own boundaries, the boundaries of our limitations, the boundaries of making us somehow smaller than we are. And we can do this in two ways. One way is learning from the past. Because there are lots of times when we are feeling that the past is still a stronghold. It's a confusion. It's a confusion on a deeper subconscious level that basically says, why? Why did this happen? How could these people do this to us? Why didn't we see it coming? Or why didn't we scream? Or why didn't we run away? And so these why questions and these questions of, of really understanding more what happened need to be resolved. So rather than really just staying in the same nar- narrative of the past and basically telling us over and over again how it felt, and what happened at that time. Stepping a little bit back and really looking at if the idea is that we are all teachers and students from each other, that we are all basically here to learn, what is it actually what I have learned from the person that hurt me, that treated me unfairly, that was unkind to me? What is the learning for me from this situation for the future, which could be, it could be about boundaries, It could be about not taking things personally, but it could be also about the power of forgiveness. It could be also about remembering that the person who hurt you was maybe also in a great deal of pain or confusion or fear, and that is where this wanting to hurt someone else came from. Being able to see that there is a level of compassion inside of you that lets you release the perpetrator, lets you release yourself from the past, is something that the victim can actually help you. It can point out to you what are these inner resources that you haven't yet tapped into, that you need right now in order to grow beyond that situation that you may have felt victimized in. And that reminds me of uh, a great book uh, by Viktor Frankl, The Man's Search for Meaning, where he describes his experience of discovering his power in the midst of death, suffering, tragedy in Auschwitz, in the concentration camp. And he wrote, we who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away the last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way, which I believe ultimately means to choose to connect to that goodness within, the goodness within that allows us to be compassionate, even those that were anything but compassionate to us, to choose to go beyond those limitations that we are set in and just keep on moving forward, just like that man that I read about who every day, because 10 years ago, He lost his car and he couldn't afford to buy a new one. Every day he walked 21 miles to work. He had to get up early in the morning to walk there to be at 2 o'clock afternoon at work. Once he'd done with work at 10 o'clock at night, he walked back again 21 miles got to bed at 4 o'clock in the morning, had to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning, and he just did it. And when he was asked why, he said, well, I just did it because that's what I needed to do. I needed to make a living. I needed to keep the job. I wanted to just keep on moving forward. And that attitude of just not giving up, but just keep on moving has moved so many people that there was a little fundraiser for him. 
And lo and behold, they had over $200,000 raised for him. I'm not sure if he bought a Porsche or what he did, but I'm sure that he doesn't have to walk anymore. But that's something that I find is, again, that victim asking us, what is it right now what I need to tap into? What is it inside of me that I can find in the darkness of that victimization to set me ultimately free? And that's for Jessica, for example, maybe that not only commitment to the own boundaries, but also maybe the commitment to say, I gotta be consistent. I gotta be the one that is encouraging to myself and say, just like you would say to a child, well, I know you're moaning a little bit, but let's have fun. Let's do something different. Let's just try out this. We don't have to be perfect in it. We don't have to win a prize. We don't have to win a race. We just gonna enjoy it. That kindness and that openness and that compassion may be exactly that energy that that inner victim needs in order to get out of that self-victimization. So when we come back, we will do a little meditation that uh, will connect you to the inner victim and hopefully makes you also understand this part of you better and uh, be able to work with it and integrate it more into your wholeness and get it out of that sense of powerlessness If you're interested in my work, and I'm working with one-on-one clients all over the world, helping them to overcome self-victimization, disempowerment, especially fear and anxiety, depression, then you can just find more information on my website, thefearandanxietysolution.com. It's called thefearandanxietysolution.com, all in one word. There is a fabulous webinar coming up in April end of April, which is exactly about breaking through fear and anxiety. So this may be something you're also interested in. Check it out. There are a lot of great tools and all these past radio shows, guided meditations, and so on that you can find to get the journey started to move beyond that sense of victimization of powerlessness and find your empowered self again. So when we come back, have a pillow ready, send the kids out in the yard to play, lock the dog into the next room, and then we get going. Radio. Find Your Shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basili as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine On Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people and living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your Soul Purpose Advocate. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. Order your copy of Dr. Friedemann Schaub's The Fear and Anxiety Solution today. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com for more information. 
ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Pat. The ancient Inca root vegetable maca is world-renowned for its wide array of health benefits. As a family-run company of true maca specialists, the maca team's mission is to provide you with fresh, organic, premium-quality maca powders at a fair price. Amazing. All of the products are always organically grown, fair-traded, GMO-free, fresh, and potent. So don't take my word for it. Experience the life-changing benefits of maca today. Visit themacateam.com. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman, and we make it all about the victim today. No victimization of the victim. We actually want to help the victim, set the victim free, but also simply have understanding and an open ear and an open heart for that part of us. So, as promised, Let's go deeper inside, work a little bit more on that subconscious level with that part of you. So for that, I would like you just to close your eyes, allow yourself to take a few nice slow breaths in and out. Just start connecting to the voice of your inner victim. Notice when that feeling comes up for you, the feeling of powerlessness, the feeling of stuckness. Maybe it comes up when you feel overwhelmed and you just have a too long of a to-do list. Maybe it happens when you are in a situation you cannot change. Or you think about people that hurt you in the past or right now. Or when you feel lonely and simply stuck. Connect to that voice, connect to that feeling. And imagine that you could actually see it inside of you, just like a little person. A little person who feels sad and woe is me. And rather than turning yourself away from that person, send from your heart compassion to it. Embrace it. Open your mind towards it and simply notice what it tries to tell you. Notice what the deeper message of that inner victim could see. What you could see right now as a deeper layer of what it's all about. Does his inner victim tell you that boundaries have been crossed? That you may have overdone certain things or paid more attention to others or external circumstances than yourself? Does that part of you tell you that you have been giving your power away and that you have been Maybe not standing up for yourself or not giving yourself a voice. Does it tell you that you haven't connected with what you really want and somehow be too attached to others, 
too attached to the past, maybe even too attached to something that felt like a comfort zone, but now doesn't feel like it anymore. Does the inner victim tell you that somehow you lost sight on yourself? And then ask yourself, when you look at the situations that make you victimized, what is it really what you feel you have power over in this situation? Do you have the power inside to let other people's judgment simply bounce off you because you remember how to appreciate and believe in yourself? Do you have the power inside to speak up on your behalf and give yourself a voice and know that you will be able to deal with the consequences? Do you have the power inside to refocus on your own needs, your own desires, and your own wants rather than holding on to some outside artificial ideas on what you should be or what you should do? See this opportunity to also know that you do have the power of compassion and the power of forgiveness. Remember that you have so much goodness inside and even if you felt treated by so much negativity and darkness from others, that goodness inside of you didn't get extinguished. That goodness inside of you still exists. You haven't given up hope on love, on kindness, and caring, and you probably show it every day in more ways than you have been aware of. Maybe your inner victim tells you that it's time to treat yourself how you want to be treated by others. That it's time to open your heart again towards yourself. And just remember what really is your truth. Just take a moment to see what lessons, what insights, what wisdom that connection to your inner victim can share with you and then make a commitment to yourself to listen to the message and follow through make a commitment to actually continue to pay attention on how that sense of powerlessness is starting to lift when you are more grounded in yourself and tapping more into the power into the power of dealing with whatever you can deal with in the power that resides inside of you and wants to be unleashed and in the power of embracing and simply loving and accepting yourself for who you are even when you feel at times like the victim. And then you can just continue to spend a little moment to send compassion to that part of you. And take another deep breath in. Exhale. And open your eyes. Welcome back. Well, I hope that the connection to your inner victim makes you realize that there is really nothing wrong with you. 
and that there is nothing wrong with that part of you, but that it does offer important insights and is ultimately a wonderful teacher for us to continue to grow and continue to empower ourselves. It was a great joy once again to be on Empowerment Radio. And if you are more interested in the work I'm offering, you can schedule a free consultation via Skype or the phone. I work with people all over the world. The website to connect to is thefearandanxietysolution.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being open and working on yourself and finding your power. Until next time, I wish you all the best. Goodbye. You've been listening to Empowerment Radio with Dr. Friedemann Schaub. Join Dr. Friedemann the first and third Wednesday each month at 11 a.m. Pacific as he addresses some of the most prevailing challenges of our daily lives. Discover how you can use the power of your mind to overcome stress, anxiety, and overwhelm and create a solid foundation of confidence and self-esteem. Learn cutting-edge tools so that you can approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. To learn more about what Dr. Schaub can do for you, visit the Fear and Anxiety Solution.